Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. Hello and welcome. So this week I've decided to build on what I was talking about last week in regards to resilience and dive a little deeper into building resilience because it's all well and good to know about resilience, know about the different areas of resilience. But I've got some tools that I've shared with my clients over the years that would be a real help to you to learn how to build that resilience capacity across your life and to make building resilience part of your life. Because it's a bit like dieting and eating healthily. Eating healthily is a life choice. Dieting is a momentary um, fad or a momentary sort of period of action. And I think that building resilience into your life is something that needs to become part of your life. So what I'm going to share with you today is about how to build resilience for life. Now, just to remind you of the six areas of resilience. So there's financial resilience, there's spiritual resilience, which, as I explained last week, is not about any belief system, but it's about you and looking after you. So your own self-belief, your own purpose, your own um, ability to <laughs> your own ability to be, feel fulfilled in life. That's your spiritual resilience. There's emotional resilience, social resilience, and physical resilience, as well as uh, mental resilience. Now, the tool that I'm going to share with you um, is something that you can use to actually build capacity across all of it, because I don't profess to know where you are on your sort of scale in any of those areas. Only you know that. So what I'm going to share with you is something that you can apply wherever you are, in whichever area. And what I would suggest and what I've noticed is that some of us naturally tend to be particularly resilient in one or two areas or in a few areas. But there are a couple of areas that we really lag behind in. Um, and I know over the last number of years that my physical resilience has gone downhill. Um, and it's actually something during the whole coronavirus shutdown lockdown thing that I've been working on. And I'm feeling so much better within myself. So that's an area that I knew that I was weak in. And it's about looking at all of the areas and ensuring that we build resilience into all of them. Because whilst we might be incredibly financially resilient, when something like the coronavirus happens and your lockdown may be on your own, if you haven't been looking after your mental resilience or your spiritual resilience, you're going to find yourself in a lot of pain and you might even find that you, you get quite depressed because you haven't built that capacity into your own life. By focusing on all of the different areas and ensuring that you're constantly building resilience into all of those areas, it will mean that when something happens in life, when you're asked to endure something in life, that you will have that capacity across every area of your life. Now, the way to build this is to accept where you are. There's no point thinking you should be, you know, for me, I <laughs> should be fitter, which is something that I did beat myself up with for a number of, <laughs> for quite a while, because that there is no should, it just is. You are where you are and only you know where that is. But when you start looking across those areas and asking yourself, so how do I build capacity in this area for myself? You need to be looking to stretch yourself 20% at least 20%. Because by stretching yourself 20%, it means you're ensuring that you're growing that area. And you only need to be stretching yourself 20% to ensure growth in that area. And I can't tell you what 20% looks like to you. I know when I was really fit, 20% looked like a lot more than it looks like now when I'm looking at building my physical resilience. Um, at my lowest, building my physical resilience was like doing a five minute exercise program, which sounds completely pathetic, but it was a start. And starting from there and building from there has given me a platform to start actually feeling quite strong in myself and knowing that I can push myself further and looking forward to exercising. So with exercise and with a physical resilience, the ways that you can build in are not just exercising more, but ensuring that you build time for rest and recuperation. Um, health and what you feed yourself, foods that don't cause stresses in your body, foods that help your body regenerate and rejuvenate, um, ensuring that you build pampering into your lifestyle so that you actually love your body and look after it and care for it and treat it well and, and, and spoil it. 
When we're looking at spiritual resilience, the things that you're looking to build capacity in are your own self-belief. And in last week's video, I spoke about um, building integrity, and I think I might focus on that next week. So make sure you watch out for that video if that's something you're interested in. Looking at how you honor your purpose in life, honor your values in life. Um, you might find that you work a certain job and you're not willing to give that up, and that's absolutely fine. But do you honor yourself somewhere else in your life? Maybe by how you spend your spare time. Making sure that your life is fulfilling that you feel like you are worthwhile. All of these things are to do with your spiritual resilience. If you don't honor these things, you can end up feeling quite depressed because you are out of alignment with who you truly are. Spiritual resilience is also understanding what it is to be human, um, understanding our spiritual evolution. And for me, one of the things I focus on a lot in my coaching and in my training is helping people to shift from being in a state of um, automation and ego sort of state and shifting into more conscious living um, and doing that is another way to build spiritual resilience into your life. Um, in regards to mental resilience there is the ability to learn more, to go out and and feed your brain, feed your mind. There's also, um, I know my grandfather right up until he passed he was determined that he was going to keep his mind agile so he had a Sudoku book and he was constantly pushing himself to do Sudoku puzzles, even though he was 95 years old. I mean, he's just an amazing person. But doing things like that to make sure that your mind keeps agile, that you challenge yourself to keep thinking, keep growing your brain. But not just growth. Um, as with the physical, you need to build in capacity for rest and recuperation. When you find that you have overstretched yourself, when you have had to face some sort of enduring issue in life and you've asked a lot of yourself, make sure you build in capacity for rest and recuperation. And in regards to the mind, um, that would be things like meditation, um, just being very present and being mindful, um, making time to go for walks um, when you're at peace, when you're on your own, so that you can just enjoy the stillness and the quiet. Those things are incredibly important if you've been stressing yourself mentally. With the mind, other things that you can build into your life are journaling. Um, and even diarising and planning can help you with the stresses of the mind. When we look at social, building your social capacities, everyone is so very different. Um, I, for a long time, thought I was an extrovert, only to find out later on in life that actually I'm an introvert with certain extroverted <laughs> properties or person traits. So knowing who you are is very, very important when you start looking at building social resilience. Because if you decide that you want to go out and be incredibly sociable, but you're actually an introvert, that's going against your nature and will cause you a lot of stress and actually deplete your energy source. So for me, when I look at social, it's making sure I have a network of people that are there to support me when I need it, but not just to support me, are there to share and to, to help each other grow. And it's not just to support me, but people that I can support, because giving is just as rewarding as receiving. Um, in fact, I find even more so sometimes. And making sure that you have good communications with those people, that you have the skills to handle disagreements when they come up. Um, ensure that you are happy within yourself to sustain those relationships, that you're not just expecting people to sustain you. And building all of that into your social network is incredibly important as well to ensure your social resilience. Now, financial resilience, um, I think most of us would know about that. It's making sure that you have more than enough, that you, have, you, you are investing, that you have savings, that um, you aren't living outside of your means, and making sure that you're growing your capacity in all of these areas so that should something happen in life, you aren't taken blindsided by whatever it is that happens. And then final emotional resilience. Because when we're creating in life, when we're creating anything in life, it starts first with a thought, which is our mental capacity. We then have an emotion. And it's from that emotion that we then take action. And emotional resilience is understanding about emotions, understanding that emotions are only feedback. And the more that you can learn about your emotions, the more that you can ride your emotions, the more that you stop resisting them, suppressing them, and you're able to interact with them in a healthy manner, the more able you are to deal with situations. Because when something comes up in life, the first thing is we think about it, we then have an emotional reaction. If you are, the more emotionally intelligent you are, the more emotional intelligence you've built into your life, 
the more able you will be to handle the stress and the emotional strains that certain situations bring up when you're asked to endure something in life. And just remember that when you're building this capacity, I mentioned the 20% stretch. But if you decide that building resilience into your life is beneficial, which I hope you can see the benefit of it now, then you might want to have this as a check that you do once a month. And once a month you look through all the different areas and you ask yourself, what is going to be my focus this month? What, is go what are the actions that will stretch me 20% that I can take on this month that are going to ensure that I'm constantly building resilience into my life? So that when something happens, or when I choose to take on something else, so that I'm not only just prepared for the challenges that I am faced with in life, but that I'm also prepared, should I choose to stretch myself, to go and do an ultra marathon or a marathon or a half marathon, um, to go and learn something new and challenge myself with some kind of qualification so that um, I can go and live the life that I would truly desire to live. I hope you've enjoyed this week's video. If you enjoy these videos, please like and subscribe um, to make sure you don't miss out on any future ones. And if you really have enjoyed it and you think somebody else might too, um, I would love it if you could share it with them. I have a five day course, which is completely free to help people with their sort of own self evolution. And if you're interested in that, I'll make sure I put a link in the notes below. I've also put a link to my website, which has lots and lots of resources, should you be interested in any of those. And um, as a coach, I obviously offer coaching. And if that is of any interest to you at all, let me know. And I can be more than happy to set up a chemistry call, a free chemistry call with you to see if working together would be of interest to either of us. So much love from me to you. Bye bye.